foundation of human understanding teaches an observation exercise, often called meditation, which permits you to become objective toward your problems and allows your heartaches, bad habits, fears, and anxieties to be completely eliminated from your life without effort on your part. Until you have begun to practice this exercise, much of what you see and hear on the following program may be shocking and upsetting to you. But if you will listen calmly and with an open mind, you may discover the key to the peace of mind and joy for which you've been searching all of your life. And now from the foundation of human understanding, here is Roy Masters. Welcome once again to the program, How to Control Your Negative Emotions. And uh, this evening I want to talk about right, wrong, good, evil, whatever happened to sin. What is sin? Does anybody know what sin is? Is sin what the Pope says it is or it isn't? Is it something you invent? What is sin? Does anybody know what sin is? Or would you like me to give you a description? I mean, you probably read the Bible all day long. I mean, many of you have read the Bible and still haven't found the part that tells you what sin is. It's everything that's not of faith. It's sin. Now, what is faith? Well, I spent two sessions, <coughs> excuse me, talking about meditation and how to become objective to your thoughts so that you're not controlled by your lower nature. So that you can move and have your being by another energy called love. Truth and love. Everybody who has not found this state of consciousness, awareness, rather than just an awakeness, like the animals awake. Remember I said animals are awake and they're asleep. Human beings are asleep. They can also be very deeply asleep. They can also be even deeper asleep. And some people are afraid to go to sleep because they fall, they're afraid they fall into a big dark hole. Because somehow the subconscious mind opens up. And it's, it's almost like a bottomless pit if you've ever seen it. A terrible blackness. There are different levels of consciousness you can descend into. Conversely, there are different levels of consciousness you can ascend into. And I really don't know how aware I can be all I know is that I'm aware, and I'm aware that I can be more aware. And more aware I will be, but when I become more aware, I look back and realize, by that which is making me more aware, realize, that I can even be more aware. It's endless. It's an endless growth, like, um, like a, a giant sequoia, a redwood tree. The only thing is that the big tree falls down. The only, way, only reason why it dies is because it gets, gets too big for its britches and falls down. In, but in other words, as long as it can grow, it lives. 5,000 years, 4,000 years, God knows how long. Human beings can live as long as they can grow. So as long as they can move into the truth through each veil. When a man is moving into sin, let's say into woman, and then woman becomes the dimension of his growth. It becomes who he is. He gets into a deeper and deeper and deeper, and he wants, the more he knows her, the more he wants to know her. Because then he knows himself, because that's what, he be, what it becomes of him. He becomes himself, the more you know this other self, the more it becomes you. So the man wants to get into a woman deeper and deeper and deeper, or into drugs deeper and deeper and deeper. Why? Because the more you know that other side, experience it, the more it becomes you. And the more it becomes you, the more conscious you would need to be, the more, the more you you want to be. And the more you have to travel towards that source of illumination or love. Of course, there's a dark side and there's a, there's a bright side of this thing. There are two sides of the coin. One movement is down towards illusion of reality and being, death as life. And the other is moving towards reality away from the false reality. Now the trouble is with this concept is that we're dealing with illusion and reality. And reality seems like illusion. And illusion can seem like reality. And depending upon the inclination of the soul, 
if, if you love, now I can't tell you what this is, now I must tell you, I, I'm not in the business of making this, making a person the way I'm about to describe. But I know, ever since I rem can remember, I didn't know exactly what it was I was loving, but I, when I first became conscious, aware, more than awake, I've always been aware more than awake, because I see everybody is, is just awake, more or less asleep, hypnotized. The first thing I wanted to know is, what am I here for? Okay? And I got a, a, a strange response to that. It's as, it's a, as if something said to me, don't worry, don't worry. He must have been Jewish. <laughs> But it was something that reassured me without words. I was comforted by knowing that I would know in time. That was good enough for me. I believed. See? <coughs> so I've been moving, as I hope you will, moving towards the realization and the actualization from realization. I mean, in my life, faith without works is dead. If you don't do what you know, you don't do what you're inspired to do, what you realize is right to do. And the knowledge of right and, and good comes from God. We don't know God, but God knows us. The only way we know God and that we know that God knows us is we understand things and we realize things that other people are dead to. Well, at least they seem dead to. They're not quite dead to it because they are threatened by us knowing it. So you have two types of people in the world, those who love the truth, and, and, and they love the truth, and without, no, without realizing it, their, their heart yearns, longs. See? Um, their heart yearns and longs for this truth. Therefore, that is compatible. I wonder if I can express, um, and I may not be accurate in this description, and maybe some electronic engineer will call me up and tell me I'm all wet, but you know, when you're in an airplane and you, you have uh, radio signals, I know you've got one set of signals that goes through the air, and you've got one that goes to ground. Isn't that correct? If I'm not mistaken. Well, where's the ground in the airplane? The ground is the airplane. The, ground is, the airplane itself is the ground, but it's not on the ground. But somehow, even though the airplane is not connected to the ground, yet the ground the earth and the airplane somehow are connected and they, it acts as a ground. See? So, I say that the yearning, the longing to know the purpose for which you were created has its ground in original being, even though you're not there yet. I hope the analogy is good, but at least it, you know, for those of you who are ignorant of electronics, great. It's a group. Wait, <laughs> it works, even if it isn't true. But uh, you see the point. I'm just stretching things just to make a point. And that's that everybody who loves the truth knows it. And you know, when you hear me speak, that I know it. People say to me, Mr. Masters, um, how do you, where do you get your knowledge from? Now, one person could just be in awe, hear me spouting all these tr truths, being eloquent and not missing a trick, and they could think, well, they don't know the truth, but, you know, I'm bigger and stronger and I've got more money than he has. He figures, I, you know, it looks religious enough for him to join and become religiousized. You know, to inspire him, he might, I might, you know, kingdom of heaven is like a, is it like the net that the fisherman threw in the ocean and he brought up all kinds of fish, big and small, and th some he threw back. I throw that one back. You see what I mean? I dredge him up. But there are some people who hear me and say, Mr. Master, genuine. where do you get this, your knowledge from? Where this truth? I, I said, well, the answer to that is, how do you know that I'm telling you the truth? Well, that, <coughs> it, that means they have it also. See, if you can recognize that I have the truth, <coughs> and you never heard the truth before, doesn't it mean 
that the truth that you've been looking for, you already have. You just never heard anyone confirm it. Now, what do I do with you? My good wants for your good. And so, I run around confirming what you already know. Now, if, you, if it's news to you, if it's something you've never heard and you believe it, because I'm stronger and bigger and smarter and wiser and richer than you are, and, I, and you are in awe of me, because you'd believe anything, one and one makes three, under those conditions, then you're in big trouble. Um, I grew up with a friend, he's not really a friend, I suppose. My mother and my, uh, her friend were, grew up as children and they married and they had children. My mother had me and she had Ronnie. <coughs> and uh, when we were young, the, you know, we were kind of friendly and we had fun together. And he's kind of a nice guy, but in my opinion, he's shallow. As we grew older, we grew to be what we were really like and we looked at each other one day. And him and his shallowness and me with my whatever I have. And we were talking one day about truth and how you know it. And I said to him, well, Ronnie, um, how do you know what your mother told you was true about the Ten Commandments? And we were talking about right and wrong, Judaism, that sort of thing. He said, well, my mother told me. That's how I know. I said, what? You believe it? If your mother told you that one and one made three, would you believe it? He's like, yes, I would. Now, I want you to uh, try this. Try this unfocused, ladies and gentlemen. Whenever you get into a little dialogue about truth and how we know what truth is, um, just try that one unfocused. Ask the person, and don't be surprised at the answer. How do you know that one and one makes two? What's the right answer for that? Does anybody know the right answer for that? I mean... Because you see, uh, see that it is so. Right. You see that it is so. I can... If anybody asks you... Um, you know, I'm asking you now. Are you awake? Are you asleep right now? What is the answer? So, well, some people are very suspicious. <laughs> they won't give you an answer. <laughs> what do you mean by that? <laughs> you know, they, they come up with all kinds of suspicious uh, um, behavior. I said, no, no, look. Are you awake? Are you asleep right now? Well, I guess I'm awake. And I'm still not sure. They don't want to be tra trapped into anything. No, I mean, are you sure that you're awake? I guess I... No, no, I don't mean guess you are. Are you awake right now? Yes, I am. All right, how do you know? They don't know. How do they know. He, he, he said it. I can see that I am. That all truth is self-evident. That's what your constitution tells you. And the, the only way you're going to know what truth is, is because you know it for yourself. Now that's the only truth that's worth knowing. Now we've got to be very careful with knowing the truth before your time. Other people preaching to you the truth before your time. And having it shoved down your throat. So that you end up with the same truth but from the other guy. In other words, you know it, and you think you know it, but only because you think you know. You know it in, by way of thinking, but not by way of discovering. We must be very, very careful. We're talking about evil masquerading as good will teach you too much truth too soon. Will also give you too many material things. Your mother trying to be good to you will, you know, for whatever reason, your father, trying to buy your love and not wanting you to suffer like he suffered, whatever the reason. Buying your respect will give you too much and rob you of discovering how to get that for yourself. He's playing God, in other words, and make you totally dependent, welfare, deadly. Won't go into that right now. I don't want to make a political thing out of this. Welfare does that. They don't care about the people. They want the, they want the people weak and dependent on the handout. I always say Tip O'Neill was a liberal conservative. He was liberal with your money, but conservative with his own. <laughs> See what I mean? He, he had a lot of money to, to make people dependent on and get power. You breed more and more of those people, and they elect you, 
to give them more, to, to cater to their selfishness. So you breed a low class of people, regardless of race, color, or creed. A very low class of people that eventually he becomes the dictator of, the socialist dictator of. See, watch out for that, the love of people. But anyway, too much truth too soon? We're talking about now evil in the disguise of good. Too much religion too soon? Too much education too soon? Why do you think the kids are committing suicide? They're on dope and pot, pressure, and teaching them nonsense, something that's not relevant to their development, something that doesn't run parallel to their own needs. See, if, if I want the child to learn, first of all, I have to decide whether that child, it, it's interesting to that child, or whether it's relevant to its needs, or whether it's too much too soon. I can't give him algebra when he doesn't know what one and one is. I can't force him to unfold. You take a petal, the flowers, the petals of a flower, and unfold them before it's time, you're going to pull the petals off. It's got to unfold in its own time. Those who love you will let you unfold in your own time. So, you, yes, we'll just take, we'll just take a... I want to know uh, where sin comes in. If you're, if you're not right, does that mean that you're in sin? Well, it's, that, that disconnected me just a little bit. Okay. Of course, if you're not right, it means you're in sin. But we're trying to t disc <coughs> dis dis decide what is sin in a few minutes. First of all, oh, everything sure. that doesn't... Okay, I'm just finished with that gentleman. Um, everything that doesn't come flowing from within you as a result of your own discoveries is dead. The letter killeth. Even though it's the true words, it's true about the truth. See, now, compare this. If you were a flower sitting in the sunlight, the light of the sun is the truth to you. Your, your, the chlorophyll in your leaves understand the messages of the sun. Mm -hmm. it sucks all the life in a nice healthy body, right? You take the, the, the flower out of the sun, put it in the shade. Now you can spray it, you can inject it, you can powder it, you can fertilize it, you can do a warm dance, you can pray. The flower won't come back. Only one thing it needs, it needs the truth. Put it back in the sun, it understands that. It's made of the sun. Now, the children are, we children are the children of the light. And we need the light. Our soul grows, whoever we are, the, well, if you look at the light of the sun, it's everything to this world. Everything moves and has its being because of everything physical. It, it has messages, it, it makes flowers grow, it, it decides the seasons and, and the climates and, and the cycles of life and death. It decides life, it decides death itself. I mean, in the desert where there's no water, the, the sun is death. See, <laughs> it decides everything. It has, the sun shining simply has a fantastic message to it. It's everywhere at the same time. It's it's all things to everything, it's everywhere, Omnip omnipotent, omnipresent, omniscient in a sense, in a worldly sense. It's the same thing with the light of truth in ourselves. Human beings are creatures of the light, and we can only grow from the light and from the light. Now, what purpose is it for anything to take us from that, by all its various forms of subterfuge, like religious pressure, um, seductions of various kinds, um, teaching us to be ambitious, to think we're God, to have lots of, to make, put money before what's right, see, to give us too much too soon, to spoil us, to make us dependent on whatever it is it has in mind for us. What purpose does it have? We have good and we have evil. And there is an evil in this world, a dark force, an intelligence. And, and it, seeks, it seeks to take us from the light because it has no life of its own, it being sort of spiritual death. 
It has no form of its own. It has to steal the form in a manner of speaking. Give you an example of what I've said. Talking about a flower in the sun. The, f the flower is called an independent. It's independent because it lives from light 92 million miles away. Everything else, the plant eaters, everything else, the caterpillars, they all live on the plant. See? So they're, they're dependent creatures. Plants are independent. They don't, need, they don't depend on anything in this world. They, de they depend on something not of this world. And everything of this world is dependent on it. Well, let's take another form of plant, mushrooms, toadstools. That's a plant too. It can't live in the light, but it doesn't do very well in the light. But it lives on the stored light of the bodies of other creatures. Everything in this world, there's a, 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 an equivalent to what's going on in ourselves, you see? So what it has to do, with the, the spirit of this dark world embodies itself it recreates itself in its own image by something called temptation. Did you want to? Yes, I don't mind taking a question. Yes, uh, I've heard you speak about the uh, pod people. I wonder if you could go into that. Well, I'm cutting. You're, you're working into that. Yes, um, I am. And uh, in the movie, uh, the the snatch, the body snatchers. Yeah. Um, they were aware that of the few people who were left who were real, real humans. They were aware and they tried to tell to, the others. To, yes. And, and then nobody uh, listens. Because they were all snatched. I feel, I feel like, I'm, I'm, feel like I'm, I'm, I'm the principal actor in the, the body snatchers because I'm saying, hey, look, they're not real people out there. Their bodies got snatched. They've, you know, somehow the, 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 new, the person that sits there is made out of the debris of the old one. It looks like it, but it's a different, it's, it's a fake. And that's what we're talking about now. There's something about, there's something that goes, a metamorphos, metamorphosis that goes on. There's an evil opposed to good. And the purposes of good and evil and the moral of it, I won't go on into this evening. But, but, but just briefly to touch on it, very briefly, there can't be an up without a down, a left without a right, uh, you know, uh, 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 beauty without ugliness. It can't be, you see. The Bible says there's no virtue, there's no claim to virtue without temptation. So, something called temptation, the opposite of good, see, tries our souls, see, tries our commitment. And if we are successful in triumphing over it, or finding salvation so we might, then the the encounter strengthens our spirits. The evil serves the purpose for good. Just like danger produces courage. Could you have courage without danger? Is it possible? Is, you're not, you can't build a muscle without resistance to the muscle. So there's a purpose in evil being what it is. And whether God created it or not is another subject. I'm sure he did, because he created everything, even evil. And the thing is that if you respond, if you, if you respond to that evil, you give your life to it and it becomes stronger. See, life flows out of you and you become weaker and it becomes stronger. And the interreaction between it is that it becomes you and you become it. In other words, how does it work? The classic vampire a classic vampire, you see the vampire bite the victim and something of the vampire goes into the victim and then the victim, after he's been drained sufficiently, dies. But when he comes back to life, he comes back to life as a vampire himself. They call that the undead. Now I tell you that this is what you find in our society everywhere psychic vampires everywhere. And they have a way of biting, tempting you, teasing you, seducing you, upsetting you from, from, from out of your moral boundary. In other words, there's a moral boundary of your consciousness. Remember we described that in the last few programs. 
So there's an inner world, there's an outer world, and I say now there's a parameter, a perimeter, like East Germany and West Germany. If you're in East Germany, you're under that system, and you have to do is, that you're told there, you come under that, the influence. In West Germany, you come under a different system. It's doing its best to try to pull you into East Germany, trying to pull you, lure you there, so it can take possession of your life and operate through you. It's more than that. They take your life because the evil of people, once a person has been bitten, once a person has been tempted, he gives his life over to that which has seduced him. And it seduces him or seduces you for the purpose of taking your life because it has no life of its own. It's a mushroom. It's a mushroom burger. See? And then you feel drained and you take on its identity. You, you know, eventually you die as a real person and you come back to life. See? In a sense, you come, when you, but you come back to life not as a person that you were created to be when you were born. You come to, back to life with the nature of that thing within it. The nature of it within you. And you also have to aggravate the life out of everybody around you. Tease, seduce, upset, get reactions, take life from, kill in order to live. Cannibalism is the lowest form of that. Not only do we psych each other out and drain each other of energy and live off other people's dying because our own death must be made alive through their death. Death to the living, life to the dead. That's the way it is in this world. That's why it's so much crime and so why it's so powerful. And that's the reason why you must find the truth that makes you free. This book called The Satan Principle, you'll find very interesting. We don't, we don't talk about this book very much because the title's a little scary, but it shows you how to protect yourself psychologically from these forces. But you have to understand them in order to deal with them, so don't be scared. You can't fight something you don't understand. But the minute you start to understand it and you start to look at it, objectively, meditatively, you see that that state in itself, remember I said about the dream, when you wake up from a dream, it has no more power over you, the nightmare has no more power over you. Say, learn to follow the instructions in this book and you'll know the truth that makes you free. Right to the foundation of human understanding, it's uh, $8, $10 including uh, mailing if you want to write those of you who are, in, uh, who are viewing this program this evening. And we'll continue this thought with a lot of questions and answers in our next broadcast. Thanks for listening.